I'm a big fan of Obsidian and have been an Obsidian user for years, but this is any type and apparently it combines Obsidian with Notion, so I wanted to explore it. From the graph view, if I go to the top left, I can then open up my sidebar and you can see I've experimented a little bit and then I push on my homepage and now I get to a page. But it's not a page in the terms used inside of any type. If I scroll down the bottom of my page, you can see I've got a lexicon here to help me understand and I have three main questions. What features does any type have or not have? Can I move what I'm doing from Obsidian to any type? And who would any type help? And this lexicon helps me understand the differences between Obsidian and any type. So I'll be making that comparison throughout this video. And this page isn't technically a page, it's what's called an object. The my home page object has a page type. In Obsidian, my home page would be a file and page would be a class. But I'll get to that a little later. For writing, it does exactly what you would expect it to do. It's got the markdown feature so you can push a dash then space and it makes it into a bullet or one dot and then it turns it into a numbered list or a hash for a heading one, those sorts of things. It has slash commands just like Notion or Obsidian where when you type in a slash it brings up the command menu of all the different options. It has a clean aesthetic. It looks very similar to Notion and you can make Obsidian look any way you want. So I'm going to say it can look like Obsidian, but it doesn't have to. The columns, as you can see inside of here, are just like Notion before the text highlighting. So Notion, you can now highlight text across blocks. You can't in any type at the moment. It's still just the, the block based highlighting, which is inconvenient. I personally don't use columns in Obsidian, so this doesn't really help me or hinder me. It has all the normal text editor hotkeys, so control arrow key to move back, control shift to highlight, all those sorts of things with control F for find, and then you can find words. You can make a new window, but it's not as intuitive as I was expecting. You have to go to the top. You can see I'm on Windows, so <laughs> I've got the Windows default, and then uh, control shift N to make a a pop out window as it's called in Obsidian. There are lots of shortcuts, but the main ones that I use inside of Obsidian when I'm typing is to be able to move lines up and down, which you can do with Control Shift and then up and down with Control H helping out with the history, which again, Notion and Obsidian both have these things. So this is nothing unique to any type. It's in most notes apps. As you can see, the cursor block highlight for me is a missing feature because when you have loads of text and you're writing a lot, which is what I do, I research and write, it's extremely inconvenient. One of the reasons I actually moved from Notion to Obsidian, what, two, three years back. I haven't found spelling or grammar checkers yet, like at all. So maybe I'm missing something. Any type people let me know in the comment section below, but this is kind of important if you're going to use any type to write. There is also no find and replace. So sometimes I want to replace a name or replace a word inside of a script. So not having this feature is again, another inconvenience. So a missing feature, but not having split screen is a big deal for me because when I'm writing, I want a research file up. I want my script up and normally I'll have a canvas up as well, but any type doesn't actually have a canvas. So I'd have to use another app for that anyway but still the principle stands i want to be able to have at least two different what i would call files or in this case objects open at once but you can't do that you'd have to have two windows and then move them side to side just like a notion which to me is just, it, it's just inconvenient it's not easy and slows down my work so mm annoying to me. I think this feature is something that can be solved fairly easily, but when you have lots of blocks together, very similar in old Notion versions, it's hard to click in the middle because you can't make a block, so it doesn't do anything. You have to actually click into the block and then create a new block to find underneath it. it it's just, it just slows you down. It's, it's a small thing, but to me, it's an annoyance and if I'm going to be using this over and over, is an annoyance. With the last point about the writing experience for me is there's no outline on the side. So when I'm writing in a long document, whether I'm writing an article or a blog post or I'm writing research, if I have headings, I can't use the outline. As I scroll down, you can see I've got a title. I've got a heading one, two, and three. In Obsidian, there are six. Notion still has three, I believe. And then there's a subheading. So there's five, but this is a main title. These are three headings and then a subheading. So there's five, not six, but you can work it around. But the table of contents is the only way to get a table of contents block or an outline to jump up and back, which now I'm up here, I can't jump around anymore. It's again, it's a small things that are irritating. Moving down to the blocks again, it's really nice to see that all of these apps are bringing in the same sorts of features. So it's not brand new to anyone. So we've got the numbered list, we've got a bulleted list, we have a toggled list, which again is an obsidian and notion, very nice check boxes, call outs, 
highlights. Inside of the highlights here, you can highlight the word, highlight the background of the word, or highlight the block, same as in Notion. You can't really do that in Obsidian very nicely because you'd need to use HTML, so the colors and aesthetics are certainly a plus for any type over Obsidian anyway. You then have the normal text, bold, italics, underlines, and strike through, the quote block, the code block, and a divider. There's actually a second type of divider, which I'll need to push a plus. Oh, come on. Let me... Okay, I'll do it this way. I'll add one in there and then I'll drag it down into there. There we go. You can see there is a dots divider as well. And the table just hands down beats Obsidian if you use tables. I personally don't, but if you do, this is really good. It's very similar to the Notion tables. You've got center, left and right aligned text. You can color the text, color the word. So even though this is red, because that's the color of the cell, I've actually highlighted the word, which is why it's yellow. And then you have top, middle and bottom, but they only work if the cell is actually long. So you have to have write out some stuff to see it take place. Moving down, you can see we can import an image and if we go to the slash and scroll down, you've got your file, your picture, video, audio, PDF, bookmarks, which are links, code snippets, which is just a code block, and then latex. The bookmark showing over here, essentially just an embedded link with an attempted column in a column here, but unfortunately you can't do that. So for those really familiar with Notion, like way back, to make a column inside of a column, you needed to make a page, or in this case, an object, make columns inside of that, and then turn it back into text inside of here. But you can't do that in any types. So there's no way currently that I can find to get a column inside of a column, which is irritating. But this is where any type starts to shine over Notion and starts to bring its connections with Obsidian. I've got text here that says relations and underneath it, there is this input box, but the input box has already been filled and it's been filled because it's actually at the top of the object, the page object up here, a lovely description. So if I come underneath, go into the slash commands, type in description, you can see there's a relations option and description. Alternatively, if I scroll all the way down, you can see here are loads of other, what, any type calls relations. Inside of Notion, there will be your properties and inside of Obsidian, they would be your properties. But Notion, to my knowledge, doesn't have inline properties. Obsidian does, and that is what any type is doing here. It's giving you properties in line. So if we go description, you can see I now have the description property in here twice. And let's just remove those words, click out to save. It's now saved that property information in line here. And as I scroll up, you can see it's also changed up here. So if I add the description writing back in and scroll down, we've then got that information in here. So that's what a relation is. It's essentially just a property to my understanding anyway. And then when we come down, you may think these are databases, but they're actually two different objects. This is a collection object. So when I click in, it looks very much like a database because this collection is a database object type. So my homepage is a page object type. But when I go into this is a collection, this is a collection object type. And if I change the name to collection, the object is called collection and its type is collection, which is basically a database. I'm going to leave that here. And you can see if we go to the top, you can add an icon, add a cover, just like Notion. And inside of a page object type, there are actually more options. So you've got icon cover and then layout. So you can basic profile. There's loads of settings in here, which is really nice for customization, but I'm personally not fussed with that. Aesthetic people, maybe. So let's go into this database collection object. We've got all, we've got a grid view, we've got a gallery view, a list view, and a Kanban view. So while we're in the Kanban, let's plus. So I've now created an object inside of a database. So this is a brand new object. I can make it a page object, a task object, a collection object, or I can go through other types. These are the default types that any type gives you. And then you can go into the library and it's got loads of other types of objects that you can add inside of Obsidian. This would be your class. So a bookmark class, a document class, a human class, etc., etc. Notion, I don't think has this. So let's call this a page and this is a new page object. And so inside of the database, we now have an uncategorized object. I can then drag that over. So now it's test. And as you would imagine, the test is a relation, a property of this object page. Going into the list view, just like Notion, it's a list view. Grid is a table and gallery is a gallery. When you right click on any of the views, you can see we've got the four views. There isn't a calendar view inside of any type yet. Not that I've found anyway. Right click on the gallery. You can show the cover, all of the same sorts of settings you'd find inside of Notion in the list. Same, and the Kanban pretty much the same. You can group by different relations. 
properties inside of here. And because this is essentially a database, you can go over and you can filter for things, you can sort for things, and then you can also customize the amount of properties, relations that are shown. Why apps use different names, I'm really not sure. So let's just show the tag so you can see it's showing the tag because that's what this Kanban is categorized by. You can see group by tag, which is why it's added the test tag relation to the page object. When I go to the list view, I can then go into the settings, show the tag relation, and now it's showing test. And I can do the same thing in the grid or table view. But there is another type of database called a set. And this is a set. You can see there is a tick box to the side because this is a query of just the task types. This is an inline collection. That's the actual collection. This is the set and this is the inline set. So when I click into this as a set, it then shows the set. I'm going to change the title to query because that's basically all it is. You can see it is a object type set and then the object type that it's looking for is task. And you can change this to any type of object. So let's get rid of that. You can see now it's not showing anything, but now I need to add a type to the query. So if I come into here, object type, then giving me all of those options. So let's click on page and now it's querying for all of the page object types. So that's the new one that I made a minute ago. You can see because it's a query, it works the same way as a database. I can come over, I can then show the tag and there's the test tag and everything else is exactly the same as a collection database. But this query is specific to a object type and a query like this or a set is actually being shown inside of the sidebar here. If I click on the three dots, you can see it's a widget source. These are sets. So I have a set of sets. So this is querying, looking for all of the different sets that I have inside of this workspace. You see, there's the query. That's the object I'm on at the moment. That's the set object I'm on. If I go to page set, this is essentially exactly the same as the one I just went off. It's just a different object that's searching for the same thing. Going into the widgets, you can compact the list so it doesn't show you everything, or you can expand it and show 14 options if you really want to. And the same can be said for collections. You can see if I go into sources, it's showing collections. So now it's listing out all of the collections, so all of the databases that I have. There's only two in here. One of them's people. I am a person. And then the database that we made. For the home page, you can see there's no drop down list, and that's because of the setting that I have. It's just showing a link, so it's a compact version. If I show the tree, it shows all of those objects in there, which is not what I want to see. So I put it into link, and now it's condensed. Editing the widgets lets me add as many widgets as I want. You can see objects, and yeah, you can just customize this, but it's nowhere near as flexible or as easy to add to or remove from as Obsidian. And there's no right side either, so you only have what you see on the left. Now I've changed the query back to task. You can see we've got the task in here, and it's the same task that's being shown inside of this set here, which is the task tracker set right there. If I tick something off inside of there, it will then tick it off inside of here because it's just the tick box of the object. So this don't forget object is a task object type with a creation date relation property and a due date status relation property. I've spoken about filters, spoken about sorts, spoken about relations, and the tags are highlighted because the tags, if we come into the library and click on relations, if we come down, you can see tag is locked. And that's because some of these relations properties are locked, i.e. every object has them. It's the same as Obsidian. It's the same with Notion. It's just you don't have to see them. And it's the same here. You don't have to see them, but every object has it. They're my relations. And if we go over there, you've got the any type suggestions. Now, I don't find this useful because I only want to add properties when I need them, not all of these, but it's there if you're not sure. Going back to the top, going over to types, these are all of the types that the AnyType library has, and you can pick any type <laughs> of object. My types are limited. I've added a couple just to test it out, but all of these are locked, so you have to have default types for any type to really function. So clicking on the don't forget task object, you can see we've got type templates. Now, because all of any type is based off of objects, Templates can't be added to databases or collections because it's type specific. So if I click on to the type of this object and open that type, this is the type information box. I'm going to open it big screen so we can see everything. This is a template and a template in any type is exactly the same as Notion or Obsidian or any other app that has templates. You add the template in and then when you create the type, you get the option to use them. 
This is the recommended layout. These are the associated relations or properties with an overview query down the bottom showing all of the objects of this type at the moment as one. If you were to use tasks in any type, I would imagine there's going to be thousands in here. How that affects speed, I don't know, but it does concern me. And then when we look at settings, so I can come down to this navigation bar, you would have seen me move the back button, there's forwards. That's how you create a brand new object. That's the graph. That's the search, but I can come into settings, change the preferences. So a default object type at the moment is note, but it can be any of the types from the drop down that you've added into your types. And when you look at that, I'm an idiot. It's disabled. That's why there wasn't any spell check on. There you go. There is a spell check. That's just me being um, not diligent enough. So let's just double check that. Yay. Now I have spell checker. I was silly. But coming back into the settings, you've got appearance. So light mode, dark mode or system. You can automatically show and hide sidebar in Obsidian. I use multiple workspaces. So all of that's done for me, depending on what I'm doing, whether it's home, food, library, movies, working, writing, researching, etc. You can turn a pin code on, but if we go down to the recovery phrase, you can see there is a phrase that you have to remember. So if you lose the phrase or you forget the phrase, you can't sign in at all and the company can't help you either, to my knowledge. So I'm actually using my Obsidian to note down my password to any type so I don't lose access to my locally stored files on any type. But this directly relates with the synced icon at the top. So this, even though it's local, i.e. it's on my computer, is also synced to a server, which syncs it with the phone, with other devices, which is nice. It's useful. It does work faster than Obsidian Sync from my experience, but from a subjective experience of moving around in any type, typing and going and using hotkeys and shortcuts, it is slower. And I think it's because it's syncing everything it does. Whereas Obsidian, it's extremely quick all the time, but the sync between devices is a little bit slower, but I'm not gonna be typing on two devices at the same time. So it's not that much of an issue. From the interview I listened to, they're mimicking the pricing structure of Obsidian. So you pay for publishing, but I believe that app is going to be free for everyone if they're using their own devices to store things. So I'm going to tick that task off. It's now done from there. And coming back around to the lexicon, you then have an object, which is everything that isn't text. So essentially a file. You have a type, which is where you add templates, which has specific information, which in Obsidian is a class. A set, which is querying a type, which in Obsidian is just a data view query. A collection, which is an object that can also collect other objects, i.e. a database in Obsidian, a data view query. There are relations, which are links between objects, which are just properties, but they can be in line, which I don't think Notion has. And then there are templates, which are type specific. And in Obsidian, it's a file, so it's not type specific. It can be anywhere of anything at any time, which I personally configure inside of the quick add plugin settings, but that's just me. On the whole, this looks really nice. It has all of the features you really need, plus some. It is extremely similar to Notion with some added features like the inline relations and has some similarities with Obsidian, but Obsidian is still more customizable, more flexible and far more extensible because of the community plugin ecosystem. So I'm certainly not moving away from Obsidian, but for new people, this is a nice way to get in. And I would associate this in the same sort of class as app as Tana. So for Tana users, maybe this is something to have a look into, but remember, back up your recovery phrase, otherwise you will not get access.